It's V. Simone, Megan A. Brooks. Welcome back to the Know For Sure podcast, where we talk about healing, evolving, growing, all things purpose-driven. We are back. Are we going to do it or what? Let's go. <laughs> We're back. back. Ooh. That's my acrylic on the mic. Y'all know that gets me excited. We are here with a very special guest today, y'all. I met her years ago. Megan actually is just getting to know her a little bit. I met her years ago. This is my first time ever meeting her in person. And she is on our podcast. She flew from New York to come on our platform. Jen Gottlieb is here, you guys. Give her some virtual clowns. Thank you, B. Yo. Hi, Megan. We um we met on Clubhouse. You remember when Clubhouse used to be like <laughs> the place to be? The place. We met on Clubhouse and um for hours talking. We were in different rooms together. You brought me on your platform. I brought you on mine. You talked to my close friends about manifestation. Mm -hmm. And I just feel like your whole vibe and your, you know, your um, platform relates with our audience. Mm. So we wanted to bring you on the show. When you asked me to be on this show, I was like, it, it was literally like a dream. I'm serious. Yeah. I've loved you from, it was so weird. Like the moment we connected yeah. on Clubhouse, it was just like, we vibed. Yeah. It, was, it was like the same vibe. And then when you did this podcast, I was so proud of you. Yes, thank you. And it was just like the truest, and you coming on too, I know you used to be behind the scenes. And for you guys to come together and actually make your conversations, your powerful conversations yeah. public to people. Yeah. It's just like the ultimate form of service yeah. to people. And I was just so honored when you asked me. I was like, I, at any time, I will get on an airplane and I will fly here for you. Thank you. And That's so what we talked excited. about a little bit behind the scenes. Um, that, you know the conversations we were having in private, we wanted to have on our platform. Yeah. So that's what this is all about. So tell the audience a little bit about who you are if they don't know who Jen is. So I'm a New Yorker. I'm from <laughs> New York City. Um, I'm an entrepreneur. Okay. I'm a former actress. So I used to be a performer just like you. And my whole life when I was a little kid, I always thought that I was going to be an actress. Like mm -hmm. I was going to, I went to school for musical theater. I went to, well, I dropped out of college and then I moved to New York City to study musical theater in, uh, at this school called AMDA, the American Musical and Dramatic Academy. And I always thought, okay, I'm going to sing and dance on stage. I'm going to read other people's lines like this. I'm going to audition. I'm going to wait for people to pick me. And this is going to be my life. It's going to be my job yeah. because I knew that my purpose was to perform and to be on stage. Like that was what I, I really believe that God put me on this planet to do. But we were talking about this earlier that sometimes what you envision is not, not exactly that, it. Yeah. And sometimes it's so much better than you could ever imagine. But the only way to get to that so much better is to try and fail and, and mess up yeah. and do stuff and maybe like go the wrong path or go the right path or, you know, and, and so throughout my journey, I ended up becoming an entrepreneur and then getting back on the stage again. So now a lot of my experience in life is performing on stages, but in a different way, in a different yeah. way. So now when I speak on stages, like a motivational speaker and I teach content to people, I teach entrepreneurs how to be seen and how to be visible and how to create the lives and businesses that they want. I'm on stage now and I'm like, whoa, this is exactly what, what I envisioned I've been doing my whole life. I was going to yeah. do when I was yeah. little, but it's not the traditional way yeah which is so cool so you wanted to dance or sing or sing dance oh, and act got you. Me yeah too. i was in yeah. the broadway national tour of the wedding singer have you guys seen that movie the adam sandler yeah. movie great movie class. yeah that was um my first manifestation which oh, we can talk about yeah. but that was my dream role and i traveled all over the country i toured the country playing uh the role of linda who's mm -hmm. the, the bitch that leaves him at the mm -hmm. altar mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh huh, yeah. And it was my dream role when I saw it on Broadway. I was like, I have to play that part one day, and I did. And then when I got back home, I got this heavy metal TV show that I was on for a while. And then my life came to a massive halt because I was severely out of alignment mm. with you know everything because yeah. I was playing this part of this heavy metal chick that everybody started to know me as this heavy metal girl. I didn't like heavy metal music. Mm. Like I knew nothing about heavy metal music. Yeah. Like, but I just fell into this weird she's the metal girl thing and uh 
that time was kind of dark. So I will say, so tell us about that. Cause you seem so different than a heavy metal. If y'all look at her and hear her talking, I'm like heavy metal. What is that? What is that about? Tell us about that. You said you did that for five years? Yeah. 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 So, okay. So I was on the road with the wedding singer and I played this rock and roll character. So Linda, she was like in the show, she's like this like Pat Benatar thing. And I came back and I was an actress. I was auditioning and I was brought in for this, this casting uh, for this heavy metal rock and roll show. And the casting, you know all about this. You're an actress that said like sexy rock and roll girl. Mm -hmm. I was like, great. I just played sexy rock and roll girl for a year. I could go get this part. Yeah. I have to tell you how I got this part because it's actually really funny. I go into this audition. I'm in the waiting room with all these girls and all these girls are like real metal girls. Okay. I'm like fake metal girl. I like went to Bloomingdale's and bought like a fake like rock and roll shirt. You know, the ones that you buy, they're not real concert shirts. And these girls are sitting in the waiting room with all their piercings and their, you know, leg tattoos. And like, they're, I'm like, crap, like intimidated. Uh, But I studied all my heavy metal because I'm like, I'm going to go in there. I'm going to pretend that Wait, I know. so what made you want to do this if this wasn't who you were? Because I was an actress. Oh, okay. okay. And I needed a job. Mm. Oh, okay. You know, and, you're, you. and I was I was going to play a character. I didn't really know what it was. Got you. Okay. I didn't know what it was going to turn into. I was like, oh, they want a sexy rock and roll chick. I was auditioning for so many things. So I go in, I'm like, all right, so the actress that I, the part I'm going to play is the heavy metal girl Got you. in this casting. So the night before, I Googled everything about every metal band in the world. I was like, I'm going to know about Black Sabbath. I'm going to know. I'm going to pretend I know all about this. <laughs> I'm going to get this job. Mm-hmm. So I walk in. And they start asking me all these questions. And I'm like, yeah, I love Ozzy Osbourne. And mm-hmm. it's actually on YouTube, my audition for the show, because we like made a video about it. It's really funny. And you can see how like, I can we put a clip of that in in post. <laughs> I, I can I can uh, get it for you. Okay. It's hilarious. And on my resume, my acting resume, at the bottom of it, it says that I do a great Britney Spears impersonation just as a joke. And I forgot that it said that. Mm-hmm. And so I'm in this casting with these producers and they're like, oh, you do a good Britney? Let's hear your Britney imitation. And I'm like, I thought this was supposed to be a heavy metal. I'll do shit. Okay, go. Let's hear it. Yeah. Oh. So I sing. No, I'm like, let's hear it Like now. Britney Spears. Okay, I'll do it for you. I, I only do it for very special people. She's like, I'm ignoring you. I'm not doing that. I will do it. But I want to tell you the end of the story. So this is how I actually eventually learned that like being yourself is what gets you what you want. Because while, you know, me pretending to be heavy metal girl, when they called me and they told me that I got the job out of all those girls... They were like, it was your Britney Spears that did it because we mm. thought we wanted, oh, wow. because we loved you. We wanted to hang out with you on set. And we thought you were funny, mm. not because I was the most metal. Right, right, so that right. was a reminder to me that the things that maybe you, you don't, you want to hide. Yeah. You know what I mean? That make you, you, that make you special, that yeah. make you different, that maybe aren't the typical thing that yeah. you think people want are the things that make you stand out. Yeah. So I ended up getting this job that, yes, it was not who I was, but it paid me a lot of money. It got me a lot of amazing opportunities. I had a great time for the most part doing this. And it was a big dot that connected me to a lot of other things in my life. And I wouldn't have gotten it if I didn't Mm -hmm. just like be myself in that audition room and throw away the faking being a metal girl and just sing like Britney Spears. So that was an interesting story. Okay. So we usually pull, before we get too deep into that, Okay, pull these cards, these questions. You want to pull? No, you can have to pull. Okay, you can pull. Okay. And, uh, yeah, one. it's just like an icebreaker. Okay. What's an opinion you have that you rarely share? Are we all going to answer? Or is just just for me? Ooh, we all supposed to answer, but I'm Ooh, like, answer. what? Ooh. If, if I rarely share it, yeah. I might be. I share a lot of stuff. An opinion that I have. I don't really have one that I don't feel like. I have tons, but none that I would say on camera. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm I mean, saying. That's, that's what I was honest. thinking. Yeah, I mean, I have a tons, but that's what I'm like, I feel like rarely in the climate share. that we're in, you have to be very intentional about the things that you say, even if it be is careful. your opinion. For sure. Because you have to just, you know, be watchful Not get about canceled. how it. I well, just, I mean, yeah. and, well, and to people are hurt by words. And mm-hmm. so even if that's not your intent, yeah. you know, you have to just mm-hmm. be mindful. I feel like people are very loose with their opinion. Yeah. Everybody has an opinion and everybody has an opportunity to share their opinion. Yeah. And so you have to be mindful about it, even if it's an opinion that you stand on and you believe and whatever, you'll yeah. go to the death of it. There's a time and place for everything. So. Or how you present it. I would never... The internet will never know 100% of who I am or what I think. 
it's just not it's right. it's not for everyone. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's right. And there are some opinions that should be shared intimately, yeah. and there's some opinions that should be shared publicly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So for I me, agree. I mean, I can give a surface one. Um, dang. I'm trying to think. I know like, I can't what, even think of something that I would want to say. You, yeah. Because after she said all that, I'm like, I'm not saying that. I, I don't say this is an opinion, <laughs> but I know that this was a topic in social media that was popular or like a it was kind of going around a lot. But I, I do have an opinion. I'm not I won't say which Why way I stand on, like that. But um, Chris, Chris Brown <laughs> is a better entertainer than Michael Jackson. I'll say that in my opinion. Oh, that's in my opinion. opinion. Oh, OK, OK, OK. But I can argue that why. But that's my opinion. Oh, OK, OK. Do Impact have- no, per- as a as a as performer, a artist and performer, yes. Mm. Impact no. Mm. There's nobody that has a greater impact yeah, than Michael that's Jackson. Different. Yeah, Beyonce yeah. maybe right there. Yeah, neck she, and neck. she's like neck and neck. Yeah. When I saw her in concert, I've only I've seen her in concert one time, and I was like, this is the closest I've ever seen to any to Michael Jackson. Yeah, yeah. ever. I cried yeah. at her con- I cried Same. all concerts, but Same. yeah, yeah, Same. yeah, yeah. That's a good one. That's a that's really a good one. Good one. What's yours? <laughs> I mean, I would. Hmm. I don't think I have one. I know. I mean, I'm I really. We all have tons. It's just hard to say. The I gotta like get on a topic and trouble. then give my opinion on the topic. <laughs> that was um, a good one, though. That was really good. Yeah. But I think people can argue that. Like, I think a lot of people. Oh yeah. Argue that. I mean, people are people will be upset about yeah. that. I would yeah. argue yeah. that. No, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm not think, upset about it. Oh, because no, you yeah, believe you believe I, that. Michael is a better performer. Yes. Then, yes. See, I, I, I don't. I, but I, I impact, think a lot of people though, will agree with that. Yeah, impact. Yes, for sure. Yeah. I, I love. This, I love disagreeing with people. I love <laughs> conversations <laughs> like this, and I love talking about MJ because I'm the biggest MJ fan, fan yeah. in the world. That's why I love that yeah. you just brought that up. I was like, how does she know? Does she know? <laughs> Wait, does she? Is she just trying to start my life? Because <laughs> I, my the reason I sing and sing and dance it's is because of, him, is yeah. of Michael Jackson, and and that's the reason why Chris Brown does. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Right. But I just feel right. like right. there's nothing wrong with. That energy, right, that Michael J- Jackson possessed, right, the the purpose of it is to take it and make it and, and make better. it bigger. Yeah. And I feel yeah. like, yeah. why can't why can't we have better? You know what yeah. I mean? Why can't Chris Brown should be better than Michael yeah. Jackson? We have more available. We have more like there's more. It's grown. The art has grown. It's it's expanded. So he should be better. Mm-hmm. Why why should we just keep? No, there's that's it. You can never be better than that. Yep. Do you we know talked I mean? about. Oh, then, I totally get it. Because then you put a seal on it. That's then you right. Put yeah. a cap on it. Why we should be saying Chris Brown is better. We should be saying he's a better entertainer because he should be. Yeah. You it's, know what yeah. I'm saying? I mean, it's hard to argue that, but it should be that way. I yeah. like that you said impact. No talent. Yes, but you're 100 percent right because mm. the athletes keep getting better. So people say like yeah. Michael Jordan's the greatest you know yeah. basketball player of all time, but. I think you could argue now that there should be better, better. basketball yeah, players absolutely. because now they have better training. They, yeah. you know, have better access to mm-hmm. different coaches and trainers and, yeah. you know. They, and there's no way evolve. to tell the impact until that person is gone. Mm-hmm. We True. don't know how great Chris Brown is until, you know, until he's not here anymore. Mm-hmm. Then we're, then, because once that thing is gone, then it's missing. And Chris Brown may have, has, I, I don't even think he's hit the ceiling. Like he hasn't. Oh, yeah. Created his greatest pieces yet. I don't, so yeah. we don't even, yeah. we don't, you know, we don't we even know. know. Yeah. We don't know. But yeah. no, I love, funny. that's so that's funny that one. you just brought that up. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, did you Google that I loved Michael Jackson? Yeah. I, <laughs> seriously. <laughs> but yeah, Chris, so. my fiance like is going to laugh finger. so hard when he listens to it. <laughs> because the one thing, it's because this is about an opinion. The one thing that I get very like passionate <laughs> about her. is Michael Jackson. She's like, now this whole thing is turned. This is not about anything else. But she's like, I is about Michael Jackson. She's like, fuck the rock metal story. Let's talk about Michael. Like, no, he is the great. Mean? He is the greatest. I will say that. We kept Michael Jackson playing in our house. Like my ch- I have a video of my youngest child with a wig oh. on, his shirt opened. And Literally he's, eight, moon he's like walking. four and he love I mean he loves Michael Jackson. So all respect. Okay. Love Michael Jackson. She said okay. Okay. Okay, we can be friends. <laughs> That is hilarious. Okay, let's do one more. Okay. okay. This is a good uh, conversation starter. When you dream of your future, what are the first three (laughs) things you see? Okay. 
Mm, this is good because this is this will take us on the topic that we can talk <laughs> about manifesting. <laughs> manifesting. Yeah. Okay, so for me, you know what I love most in the entire world is helping people from stage. So I I wanna I wanna be the greatest motivational speaker in the world. You do. I do. Okay. Wow. I do. Wow. I'm gonna speak it into the universe. Yeah. Speak it into existence because okay. I believe that we all should do that for whatever it is that we want. Yeah. Um, and then. I mean, I just immediately saw Chris, so I'm engaged. My fiance, he's also my um, my Ooh. business partner. <laughs> so it's just a life with him, mm. and um, and speaking all over and and having having global impact. I yeah. want to help people. Yeah. I want to help people see what they can't see. Yeah, and become the best, you know, most fulfilled or highest potential of themselves. Lit. If that made it, you Lit. know, makes sense. Yeah. How about you? So let me see, let me see. Mm-hmm. When you dream of your future, what are the first three things you see? <sighs> mm. I guess one of them will be, I was talking to Megan and the team about this the other day. Like this has been, I say that a lot. This has been the most purposeful thing I feel like I've done in my career. So this like propelling forward and opening up more doors in my purpose, like what Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm supposed to do. Like you said, you like, I always saw myself on stage. I always talked and been funny and this and that, but a podcast or, I mean, this is modern day radio, but like, I never wanted to do that. But this is like, I feel like the most impactful thing I've done. So, you know, this like going to the highest level it can go, whatever that looks like. Um, Love one day, hopefully Mm -hmm. a family and uh, you know, um, just healthy relationships and, you know, I always say internal peace, like just mm. peace and, you know, happiness. So those three things, like a family, peace and happiness in all my relationships and my life. And then this. Those and so it is. Yeah. And so it is. Yeah. You're three. Um, I don't know if I have three, but um, I would say overall, uh, dang, I don't know. What do I see for myself? I know. Um, definitely, I like what you said as far as a global impact. I definitely feel like our platform has that potential, um, Mm -hmm. to have a global impact, Mm -hmm. um, because no matter where you go, we're all feeling the same Mm -hmm. stuff. We're all trying to search for that same thing as far as peace, regardless if people really know what they're searching for or not. We're all really searching for peace. Yeah. Um, and... I don't know. I think if if I'm being honest, that's all. I'll say this. God protects me from stuff like that, from showing me what is ahead Mm. because I get in my, I can be in my way. Mm. And so um, I'm really good at believing for other people. Um, But when it comes to myself, I'll figure out all the ways that it can't happen. Mm. So God shields me from that, from myself. Yeah. And I'm grateful for it because I don't want to be in the way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I'm just like, if you don't want to show me, don't show me because yeah. I don't want to be in the way of it. Yeah. But when it comes to, I mean, like I have a, I have a overall with the podcast I can see. Mm-hmm. Um, so that would be like the major thing that I would point to. Dope. So yeah. you, uh, we're going to get into not why she's here, but like her thing is manifesting. You know, we do that and I do that and. We all believe in that. To me, and we did an interview. Remember, what interview was that? They asked us, like, do you, oh, Brie. Mm. Asking if, you know, because we're very spiritual people. And um, Brie asked us, um, I think people were asking, like, is manifesting, I don't know your your religion or your spiritual background or what you are, but um, is manifesting, like, not of God or something. And to me, manifesting is just faith without works is dead. It's literally, like, just having faith, believing, speaking with your mouth, and saying it and believing it and working towards it, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, So my manifestation journey started from like the, what's the thing called? The secret, Mm -hmm. the law of attraction. That's like what opened up my mind to that. Yep. But how did your journey start? And I want you to tell us a little bit about like your history of manifesting. Okay. So it's so funny that you said the secret because that's exactly how I was introduced to it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I, I believe that God is totally incorporated into this okay, whole thing, okay. by the way. And we can okay. talk about that later for sure. Um, but so I was, when I was in that theater school, mm-hmm. so I was in the American Musical Dramatic Academy in New York City. I dropped out of college. I was living in like this eight foot by eight foot little tiny dorm, dorm room in New York and running around like, a, you know, oh my God, I'm in New York City, yay! Mm-hmm. And went to go see... 
this show on Broadway, The Wedding Singer, with my friend. And, you know, we had no money. We were, like, sitting in the nosebleed section. And we're, we're sitting there seeing the show. And then all of a sudden, this character comes out on stage of Linda. And there's, like, a smoke machine. And she's hilarious. And she does this whole funny song. And it was literally like God came down to me in that moment and, like, touched me and said, that is you. Literally, yeah. Like, I, like, you ever have one of those moments yeah. where you're just like, this is, oh, my God. Yeah. I, tears. It was a funny song. My friend's looking at me. He's like, what's wrong with you? Why are you crying? <laughs> yeah, like, what is wrong? And I'm like, oh, my God. Like, wow. I, I, I have to be this part. I'm going to play her one day. How I just knew. 20. Oh, okay, okay. You were older. Not yeah. older, but I didn't yeah. know this was your childhood. Okay. No, it wasn't, wasn't childhood. It was okay. when I moved to New York okay. to kind of start okay. my career and, like, be in school. And okay. I was learning how to sing and dance. And, like, this was, you know, but there was no, I'd never auditioned for Broadway before. Okay. There was no shot in the world okay. that I would be her on Broadway is this actress named Felicia Finley and she just blew my mind and I saw myself playing the role so during that time my mom had given me this book The Secret Mm -hmm. and my mom is like Reiki master and like really into spirituality and at that time I was like mom this woo woo I can't I can't I can't I was not into the woo because I was like not it and I was like I'll just read this book because everyone's talking about this book Mm -hmm. so I start reading this book and then I saw Oprah on TV talking about how she was able to manifest her role in the color purple by Mm. using the secret. Mm. And I was like, all right, if it works for Oprah and she could manifest a role, I'm going to try. I'm going to do an experiment. So I decided, I was like, let's let's experiment if this really works. Mm -hmm. I'm going to manifest becoming Linda in The Wedding Singer. Mm. I had never been to a Broadway audition before in my life. I had never, you know, there was no shot in hell. It's like, Let's see if this works. So what the book tells you to do is to visualize yourself doing the thing you want to do. So every night before I went to bed, I would close my eyes and I would visualize myself on the stage in the costume with the lights on my body. And I would like sing the songs as I fell asleep every night. Mm. And I would just like see myself. I would hear the audience and I would like really like it. it so, like act me. like it was the mm-hmm. real moment. It was like watching a movie yeah. in my mind. Yeah. And like I started to feel it. And that, this is how this, this taught me how to do this because, and, and I didn't know, like, by the way, I'm not an expert in this. This is just my truth. Yeah. You know, yeah. this is just Your my experience. experience. Yeah. And I would like hear the audience. It would get so clear. And every night I would do it, it would get better. Yeah. And I'd get better at it. Like, this is fun. Yeah. So then before I knew it, I started going to schools, telling everyone I was going to be Linda and the Wedding Singer, right? Because when you start to trick your subconscious mind to believe that something happened by playing a memory in your brain, Mm -hmm. like it doesn't know the difference between a real memory and a fake one. Oh, So I started to kind of believe that this was my reality. And so I would sing the Wedding Singer songs as my performances for school. Mm -hmm. And so when I was singing them for school, I would... I would envision that I was auditioning for Broadway when I was doing it. Mm -hmm. And like, I I was just playing this whole game with myself. And the way that I believe that the law of attraction works is not necessarily like it's magical, Mm -hmm. like it like magically brings stuff to you, but it does trick your subconscious to believe that that thing is yours. So it makes the fear of taking action to get that thing a lot less. Go away. Because your subconscious is like, oh, I did that already. That's mine. So when the auditions came, I was like, psh go let's go let's go right I like it's like neon lights pointing right at the opportunity yeah so it makes the opportunity brighter and it makes the fear less so without going into the whole detail of how I got rejected a lot for this this did not happen easy like I auditioned constantly auditioned for that role oh oh yes I went I to that you. first one. I, I thought the story was going to be like, I auditioned and I got it. No, it wouldn't be that fun if it was <laughs> it. <laughs> the story wouldn't be that great if I just got it when I auditioned. But I went in and it was my first audition ever. I was like one out of 500 girls. Mm-hmm. And I went in and I got to the final two. And it was like me and this other girl. Damn. We were like battling it out. She would like go in and then I'd go in and then she'd go in. And, I, and I, oh my God, she was, she was so good. And I was, you know, that feeling where mm-hmm. it's like, oh, she's so much, you know, like fear. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. But that that weird thing that I had solidified in the back of my brain kept me going. Yeah. You know? And I didn't get it. She did. Mm. She got the part. And I was like, you know what? It's just not right now. It's not a no. It's just not right now. Mm. And I believed that from all of the believing Mm -hmm. and the visualization that I did. So (laughs) then I had to get, uh, and I always tell people, the, the biggest part of the secret that's missing is the action piece. And I love that you said this at the beginning of the interview. No, you're saying the work go- that goes into it. That's right. Yeah, for you sure. You can't just visualize things and think about them all day and imagine them to happen. You have to take action. Yeah. And a lot of the time, the action 
is like uncomfortable, scary action. Yeah. Right. So I had to go to this. I, I, I saw this um, audition for this other show called Footloose, mm-hmm. you know, the Footloose movie. And I saw that the director that was casting it was one that was doing we- the Wedding Singer National Tour as well. So I was like, I'm going to sneak into this Footloose audition mm-hmm. right now in my Linda costume that I created. <laughs> and I'm going to sing the Wedding the- Singer music oh to this director. God. Okay. This is, you want to talk about cancellation? Mm-hmm. Dot com. Like <laughs> I could have got canceled like from, you know, musical theater world. Mm. But I was taking a risk. That was, was technically like, like disrespectful or something. It was just like something you don't do. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Like they, it could have worked not in my favor. Yeah. It wasn't necessarily disrespectful. It was like, people don't do that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I go in and I do it. And the director actually came out uh, after I sang. And he looked at me and he's like, you, come here. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm in so much trouble. Like I was <laughs> like, I just ruined my entire career. And he's like, here's my card. We're not casting Wedding Singer right now, but I want you to keep in touch with me. And when we do, I'm going to bring you back in. Mm. Yeah. Oh my god, I have I have like the golden ticket yeah. of life. Mm-hmm. And so right, I emailed that guy like every single week for like six months. He never responded to me. I was just like, <laughs> Hey, how are you? I'm doing great. <laughs> you know, like just emailing no one. Um, but I again I was so hungry for this because I had believed that it was mine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, so I kept going even when it was scary or uncomfortable yeah. or weird. When most people yeah. would have stopped, I didn't stop. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Finally, I go back in again and again and again. I get cast as the understudy. What's that? The understudy. Like the backup. The backup. Oh. I didn't get it. So I get this email in my inbox saying, congratulations, Jennifer. We want to welcome you into the Broadway national tour of the wedding singer mm. role ensemble slash Linda understudy. So like so, if she breaks her leg. That's right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I basically had to spend the first you know couple months of the show watching somebody else play my part that mm. I secretly knew like that's my part it's like I basically had to spend a couple months of the show trying to trip this bitch for pretty much <laughs> pretty much so <laughs> anyway spike her drink <laughs> <laughs> I was very respectful but I knew I knew and I believe that luck is when preparation meets opportunity mm-hmm. I was so prepared and I was ready for my opportunity so the moment that that opportunity came I knew I was gonna crush it mm-hmm. and finally it came and that same director, when before we went on the road for the big tour, like we put up the show for two months um, in Florida and in Pennsylvania, and then we were going to go with the big Broadway sets and the big Broadway costumes and everything all, and tour the country, he calls me. He's like, he knew. He knew how badly I wanted it. He's mm-hmm. like, we're switching things around, and you're going to be Linda. What? Wow. And you guys, this is when I believed in the law of attraction. I know this is kind of a long story, but it's so important because this is where it all made sense mm-hmm. to me. How long was this, though? It was like... A Years? year. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. When I played Linda mm-hmm. on the stage for the first time, the theater, the audience, the lights, the costume was the same costume that Felicia Finley wore that I watched. Mm. The sight mm. that I saw was exactly identical, the same. Yeah. As what I visualized. Yeah. Yeah. When I was sitting in my twin bed, just like daydreaming about. Yeah. It. And I remember I walked backstage and I, I like collapsed on the floor. I was like. This is crazy. It worked. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anything that I want, I can create. Yeah. Which was so wild to me. I believe in that 100%. I believe in that. That was the first experience. And then mm-hmm. I kept doing, you know, and, and sometimes you forget that it works and you mm-hmm. sabotage yourself. And, mm-hmm. you know, I got lost along the way mm-hmm. and I forgot that I could manifest things. And I, mm-hmm. you know, the whole heavy metal thing happened. My, you know, a lot of my life uh, took a turn for the worst for a little bit. Yeah. But then I had to remind myself, oh, you have this power. You can do this. It's not necessarily mm-hmm. a power that I have that's different than anybody else. It's just like, why don't you tap into this again? And then I started doing it again. And, you know, it's it's an ebb and flow mm-hmm. of, um, I would say, kind of, You, I, I love that you said, like, or I'll mess it up. Mm-hmm. We all have this thing Wait, inside of us. said what? Remember you said... I said, God doesn't show me certain things about myself because oh, I'll get in the way. You, That's right. You. So sometimes we do get in the way, right? Mm-hmm. Like when things get too good, sometimes we just stop or we mm-hmm. like su- subconsciously self-sabotage ourselves, yeah. right? To bring ourselves back down to where we feel a little bit mm-hmm. more comfortable or whatever. We create drama for mm-hmm. no reason at all. I do it all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, but then it's just about checking yourself and being like, oh, wait, you can do this and remembering moments like that. Yeah. So, like, even this conversation is so powerful of me remembering that I did that. Yeah. You know? So, like, what's next? Yeah. yeah. We can all do that. Yeah. Because if yeah. you did it once, you can do it again. That's right. Yeah. That's really good. Yeah. I think I think the 
biggest takeaway from that too is just being patient in it and not expecting it to come like just focus on believing it Mm -hmm. and not focus on how is it going to come when's it going to come what's it going to look like Mm -hmm. how's it going to show up who's going to do it who's going to help me who Mm. I feel like we get so caught up in those things so then our focus can't be on what we want it's all the other how we're going to get what we Mm -hmm. want and that's really not important the important thing is is that you see it and then you do everything that you can to push yourself in that direction. Yeah. And if it starts to not push you in that direction, stop doing that. And go into something that pushes you in that direction, but just keep moving towards what you see. I love and that. And not blocking yourself by like, oh, well, I don't really want it to look like that. Yeah. And I don't really want it to, no, I don't like the box that that came in. And I don't really like that or ribbon. And I don't like how they sent it and how it, that doesn't matter. That's right. It matters that it comes. And then so they say this or something better. Like, so I want this or something different that the universe has in store for Mm -hmm. me that I don't even know. But if you focus on the how and try to manipulate the how, Mm -hmm. like what you just said, and like plan it out exactly how you think it's it's never going to be that way. Mm -hmm. But it could be even better better yeah. Yeah. if you just is. let it a, a, yeah. allow it to play out like even our really we were talking about this earlier our yeah. relationship like I thought clubhouse was for me to build this huge audience and yeah. like be like a um Same. We yeah. were gonna be like we're gonna be the queens of clubhouse let's start these rooms that's right but really the you gift got was out of it. an yeah. amazing relationship yep yep mm-hmm. so how do you feel like people mess up when they manifest like what is like the I mean I guess Megan kind of said that too like the wording about the all the pieces, you know, but what's like the, how do people mess up when it comes to manifesting? There's two things that I think people get wrong here. And one of them we already touched on is that people think that they can just put something on a vision board and think about it and it magically appears. Yeah. And that's why I think manifesting or the law of attraction gets a bad name. Yeah. Because that's not how it works. Like you have to be specific. Like there was stuff on my vision board that I was like, well, that happened. (laughs) <laughs> like, yeah. I was like trending. Yep, I was trending. All right, I was canceled for a year. Oh, like, right, right. <laughs> like positive trending. Mm-hmm. Like be specific mm-hmm. when you manifest. You have to be specific for sure. But at the same time, like if you don't take action to get that thing, like if you don't, the, the way that it works is it allows you to take action. It allows mm-hmm. you to see the opportunities. Mm-hmm. And even if you don't realize that you're taking action you subconsciously are because the thing that's really driving the bus is our subconscious mind. Mm. You guys ever wonder how like sometimes you drive all the way home and you have no idea how you got mm-hmm. there, yeah. right? Because your subconscious was driving the car. So our, our subconscious is the thing that's really making our decisions and like, so our beliefs are deep mm. inside of our subconscious and our beliefs run the show. And when you can start to change your beliefs by implanting memories in your brain as if something already existed... Mm-hmm then your actions, your subconscious is going to drive the bus to get those things. You're saying so you're subconsciously making decisions to get there. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. So you're taking action. But the other thing that people do wrong when they manifest is they're like, I want this thing. I desire, I want it. I want it so bad. I want to make it happen. Mm -hmm. Now, the also the way that I've learned that the universe works, and I've learned this just through my experience, is that like attracts like. So when you're in a positive like when it rains, it pours, right? Positivity and negativity. Yeah. So, right, when, when everything's great and you're in a positive mood, you attract more positive things to you. Yeah. When you're in a negative mood, oh, shit, when it rains, it pours. Like, yeah. it's going to start pouring bad stuff everywhere. Mm-hmm. That's because the law of attraction, the law of the universe is, you know, one energy will attract another energy to it. Yeah. So if you're in a place of wanting something so bad, you know, you ever notice, like, if someone's desperate for you, like, even in dating, you're like, ugh, get away from me. Mm-hmm. It's re- It repels that thing because the thing that you're going to attract, the energy that you're going to attract to you is one of want and desire, which is actually when you want and desire something, you're in lack. Mm. Oh. So instead of saying, I want it, I want it, I desire it. I have it. I'm so grateful I have it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I already have it. Yeah. It's here. Yeah. Because we have everything that we want inside of us. Yeah. It's already here. Yeah. It's in existence. And if we walk around the earth like, I am so grateful I have the best life ever, mm-hmm. we're just going to attract people and things and energy to us that matches that energy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which is, I'm so grateful I have the best life. Like, that's yeah. that's how it works. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. just like the affirmations that I do. Like, I'm blessed. I'm healed. I'm, I am. Not, mm-hmm. I want to have a blessing or I want to be healed or I want, you know, you say it as if it's in real time. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. Gratitude gets you there too. The fastest way to get into that place of really feeling like you already have something 
is being grateful for it. And so for years I would do, I still do it. It's called a future gratitude practice. So it's like being grateful for things that haven't necessarily happened yet as if they did. Mm -hmm. So before I met Chris, every single day I would be like, I'm so grateful I met the love of my life today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm so grateful I met him. I'm so grateful he's here. I love him so much. You know, and I've been trying that for years. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's coming. Like Jesus, don't manipulate it. I know okay. he's on the way. Okay, he's yeah. on the way. Then, Jesus. <laughs> well, tell us how you got your husband in. Okay, because I'm over here. I thought I manifested. Well, I actually did. Now looking back, I'm like, all right, you guys, hold up, hold up, hold up. I know the show is getting good. It's getting juicy, but we got to pay some bills. Now, listen, for most of us, learning a second language in high school or college, it wasn't exactly a high point in our academic careers, okay? It's very, very difficult. I was in French. I was in Spanish. I was like, this is too much, okay? Now, thanks to Babbel, the language learning app that sold more than 10 million subscriptions, there is an addictively fun and easy way to learn a new language, whether you'll be traveling abroad, connecting in a deeper way with a family member, or you just have some free time and want to learn a new language, Babbel teaches bite-sized language lessons that you'll actually use in the real world. Now, y'all, y'all know my stepmom is Mexican. I done talked about that. I did not know what she was talking about growing up, okay? But Babbel helped me understand her a little bit more because she speaks Spanish. Babbel's 15-minute lesson make a perfect way to learn a new language on the go. Other language learning apps use AI for their lesson plans, but Babbel lessons were created by over 100 language experts. Their teaching methods have been scientifically proven to be effective. With Babbel, you can choose from 14 different languages, including Spanish, French, Italian, and German. Plus, Babbel's speech recognition technology helps you to improve your pronunciation and accent. There are so many ways to learn with Babbel. In addition to lessons, you can access podcasts, games, videos, stories, and even live classes. It comes with a 20-day money-back guarantee. Start your new language learning journey today with Babbel. You guys, right now, save up to 60% off of your subscription when you go to babbel.com slash KFS. That's babbel.com slash KFS for 60% off of your subscription. Babbel. Language for life. Back to the show. I I did manifest my ex. Like, and it's crazy because what is what he has a tattoo? He has a tattoo of a quote that's on my vision board. Did I tell you that? Yeah, no. Yeah. It's on his it's on his arm and it's on my vision board. I was like, wow, like that's manifestation. Yeah, oh, yeah. for sure. Because I was like, I'm going to have a boyfriend this year and I'm gonna, you know, and it happened, but it just mm-hmm. wasn't the one. No. But he's gonna lead you to the one. Yeah. For sure. Next. I think when I think about manifestation, I talked about it a little bit, I think, on um, that uh, seminar, the webinar you did for close friends. Mm-hmm. I think Jen was oh, you on, were on that mm-hmm. one. Yeah, um, yeah. But for me, I like there's a scripture that says that God will give us the desires of our hearts. And I feel like a lot of people look at that scripture and think like, oh, anything I want, he'll, he'll give me those things. And for me, I always interpret it as he'll place desires in our hearts like mm-hmm. he will give you those mm. desires and I think that whatever those desires that you truly deeply deeply feel those are the things mm. that we should be trying to manifest and I think that a lot of times we I mean and there's nothing wrong with, I mean, when we talked about this on the thing there's nothing wrong with saying I you know I want I I want the car that my, my dreams yeah. I want the love of my life I want the career that I've always wanted. And there's yeah. nothing wrong with those things. But I think we don't focus a lot on those, like really the things that God really has placed like deeply within us. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Those desires that like we really, really, truly deeply want. Um, What's one I, for you? Um, I think, man, probably like peace of mind is like my biggest thing. Yeah. It's like having like a peaceful mind. Yeah. Um, and, and like a deep, deep desire to impact people mm-hmm. or, or, to, but, but maybe that's not the right way to say it, not to impact people, but to specifically have a positive impact. Well, yeah, but to specifically have a like pointer to who God is. Like, I want people to know that they can have a relationship with God. That's, like, my biggest desire. Yeah. Like, out of anything, I want you to know that it can happen. For, like, that is a real thing that can exist for you. Yeah. And that your journey is very specific. Like, your experience is very specific. 
and there's a very specific blueprint for you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the only way to get that is through God. Like, mm-hmm. that's my biggest desire is mm-hmm. to, like, you can get out of this. This dark space, you can get out of that. Yeah. Like, yeah. you can really have peace it's and know possible. who God yeah. is. Like, that's my biggest desire. So I think that has been always the thing that has led me in every direction of my life. I've been able to do that in everything that I've been able to do. Like, so every awesome. career I've ever had, I've been able to do that in mm-hmm. some way. So And your so relationships. Awesome. I said that the other day. I was like, I think I... Not subconsciously. I didn't like go get baptized or go to the altar or go to a church, but I regave my life to Christ because of her. Like Mm -hmm. her relationship with God changed my relationship with God. Like that impact that she's had. And it wasn't like she was pulling out the Bible every day, showing me the Bible, Bible thumping, read this scripture, go to church, do this. It was the way she acted and Mm -hmm. the way she talked and the way she moved and maneuvered through life and dark spaces. And she showed me God through her. And I think that's what I want to do. Just show by the way you are. are, Yeah. Your walk. The way you are. Like the way you live your life. Yeah. I do not have to open up the Bible. I don't, I'm I'm like, I don't know scripture like Megan's knows, Megan knows scripture. Megan can quote the Bible. I don't know the word of God like maybe I should and I can get better at that. But just the way I treat people, the Mm -hmm. way you walk, people should see a light in you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that that's important. But that's, but I think that that, part of manifestation is so important. Those yeah. deep, deep, the deep things, the, the deep things shit. that really, you know what I'm saying? Like, you're like, I want to have a global impact that thing. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. All the other stuff. Yeah. That'll come. Cause that'll and that's come. important. Yeah. I'm not saying don't yeah. do that. Manifest yeah. all that stuff. It's going to come. Yeah. But when you really focus and hone in and laser in on those deep things, yeah. I want to have a global impact. Yeah. I want to show people that they can get on stage and they can do whatever they want to do, or yep. they can, you know, Yep. move a crowd or they can mm-hmm. do this or do whatever that global impact like that's major and yeah. i feel like we don't focus a lot on like those deep 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 things that we want yeah to see happen in our lives yeah. the materialistic mm-hmm. things are just the cherry on top i say yeah. that all the time it's like, a bonus yes a bonus. i want a million dollar yeah. multi-million dollar house mm-hmm. yes i want this is going to be a billion dollar podcast yet all of that yes i want a life of luxury and convenience mm-hmm. yes mm-hmm. i do well like, here's the thing the more that you have a life of luxury and convenience the more that you can create your impact right the easier you can create right. your impact and, right so it goes with it well, yeah, yeah it goes and hand i'm saying hand. that's gonna come though that's i don't right. think that that's not gonna happen either like but I, when i get that mansion i want to be Happy, peace, right? I want to be at peace. Oh, it doesn't even matter if you're not peaceful and you have a mansion. The mansion doesn't matter. That's what I'm saying. It doesn't matter. People, that's what I think. That's my point. I think a lot of times we think we want all these things, and and you're not like, oh, I want the, I want to be a, I want a million followers on Instagram, and I want to be trending, and I want to have the luxury car and bags yeah. and da, 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 da. and then you get those things and then what miserable and you're miserable, miserable because you skip the thing that you re- the, the desire that God truly placed in your heart you skipped all of that yeah and now you got all the things that you thought on the surface yeah. you wanted yeah. And then what? Yeah. Those don't You're fill empty. the void. Yeah, yeah, they're empty. They don't fill it. Yeah. And it's not going to help. Wherever we going after this, you can't take that stuff with you. Mm-mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like it ends up being wasteful. And not that those things can't come, but you just have to focus on the true, the true thing. Yeah, that like need. the thing that really, really, really matters. Yeah. And then I believe everything else comes with everything it. Everything else. Or yeah. you can enjoy everything else. Yeah. A thousand percent. Uh-huh. I feel like that's like when you're in the pocket. Like I like to call it in the pocket. Like in the pocket is like you're following your bliss. Like that mm-hmm. real, what you said, like that real mm-hmm. thing that's your real purpose that you really desire, that deep thing. When you're on that, in alignment with that, mm-hmm. all the other stuff comes. Mm-hmm. And then the other stuff is just, you can receive it so much more mm-hmm. and you can really like actually use it for good. Yeah. But when you're not, in that and and the other stuff starts to come you're like what do i even need yeah, this well, stuff yeah, for and that's yeah. that creates a really empty life yeah what yeah, for sure what and you too megan what do y'all feel like is one of the first steps for people to find that because i went back to dallas and i talked to my sister um we were talking about healing and stuff mm-hmm. and she asked me she was like well what do you how do you what do you do what's the first step and my advice not even advice my truth to her was for me, I was like, I'm still finding mine, but I'm just trying mm-hmm. shit. Yes. Like, you have to literally try different things over and over. And then, like we said on the other episode, take inventory of how you feel. If you feel good after you try journaling. Mm-hmm. If journaling might not work for you. Grounding. Grounding might not work. Go into the park. That might not work for you. But if you feel different after it and you, you take inventory of that, you try to do that thing over and over. What would be your... Um, uh, not advice, but your experience of how to tell somebody like what would be the first steps to finding that peace, that joy, that inner healing. Doing exactly what you just okay. said. Doing, but 
I also like to connect the dots looking backwards and I, I like to reflect a lot on my life. And I think, um, what's the thing? And y'all, we all have this thing. The thing that you think about when you're doing that thing, you get emotional. Mm. Or like when you think about doing that thing, you get emotional. Mm. Like for me, like if you were to talk to me about like how much do you love performing? And I'm like, oh, <laughs> I, I, Michael Jackson. I love, oh yeah, no, I get emotional <laughs> when I talk about Michael Jackson. Uh, but you know, like, or, or, and you think about a moment in your life where you were the most in the pocket. Like, can you think about like a moment, one moment where you're just like, this is everything. Like, I feel so like mm -hmm. I'm serving the world right now. I'm serving my purpose. Mm -hmm. I feel good. I'm like, I'm in it. And it could be the littlest moment. It doesn't have to be a major yeah. mega moment. It could be a moment with Megan, yeah. just like having yeah. a connection with a friend. Mm -hmm. Like think back to those times and like, maybe you can write down like three of them. What were you doing? Where were you? What were you experiencing? What did you do leading up to it? And then do more of that. Yeah, and you're not going to yeah. figure it out on the first try. Yeah, and mm -hmm. you are always going to be figuring it out. I also don't believe that we only have one purpose. Mm -hmm. I don't believe I that believe we only that. have one passion. Like people yeah. are like, find your purpose, find your passion, and only do that. I'm like, it can be always, multiple. Yeah, it, and it can change. It in can different change. Chapters. Yeah, mm -hmm. we change. We evolve, and and you might not even realize that your purpose right now is leading you to an even bigger one mm -hmm. later. Mm -hmm. And you just got to keep doing that mm -hmm. in order to get there. So. Yeah. You're never going to think your way into anything. Yeah. And that's why I love you guys so much. I mean, I love you so much for so many reasons, mm -hmm. but you're like, we're just going to do this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're going to do it until yeah. we do, until we figure it out. Yeah. And that's how you created everything, yeah. right? Like you take action, you're doers. Yeah. And I believe that the way to find what you want and how you impact the most people and your real desires is mm -hmm. by taking action relentlessly. Yeah. Messy with fear. Yeah. Imperfectly. Yeah. I think it's, I think it's all of that and not a having an understanding that it's not easy. Right. I think people think that it's healing is like the hardest, it's the hardest thing in the world. And it also never stops. Yeah, it's, constant. it's just a constant yeah. thing. And I think as you go on your journey, like for me personally, I've just been able to develop practices yeah. and I just keep adding to those practices. And then we were talking about this, um, this weekend, I was like, this season that I'm walking into in my life, I feel very unprepared, but I feel very equipped because I don't know what's ahead of, mm -hmm. of me. I don't know what battles are waiting for me, mm -hmm. but I do know that in every battle I've faced thus far, I've picked up a weapon. I've collected mm -hmm. tools. tools. I've collected mm -hmm. things to, to arm and protect myself from what's ahead. The next battle. And so yeah. I may not be prepared, but I am equipped for it. That's and beautiful. I believe that you have to just, like she said, take inventory, but also collect your weapons. All right, I went through that, and I survived, and I got all the weapons. I slayed all all of them motherfuckers and I got yes. all the weapons from it. Yes. You know what I'm saying? I took all their weapons yep. and now the next battle I fight, I got all my weapons yes. and then I'm going to kill all of them so the and then I'm going to take their weapons easier. and every time yeah. I'm just arming myself yes. more and more doesn't mean that the battle I face isn't going to be hard, but I'm equipped to protect myself. I'm, prote I'm equipped to make sure I don't die in that field. So it don't matter anywhere I go. I know I'm not going to die. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I'm a fight yeah. and I'm going to have the, th I'm going to have the tools and the weapons to armor myself, to protect myself in that, in that battle. And I believe that we have to be intentional about knowing that it's not going to be easy Yeah, yes. and it doesn't stop. And there's no end point. You just have right. to keep collecting, keep taking inventory, keep collecting those weapons and keep fighting through it. Yeah. That's it. It's like Th when you get your heart broke, like uh -huh. the first one, if you be like, oh, yeah, it sucks. <laughs> I'm it about sucks. to Die. Throw up. Yeah. I'm going to die, like, yeah. literally physically sick. And then, I mean, obviously, heartbreak is still, it's hard. Yeah. But you get over it a little quicker. You understand a little more. It doesn't hurt as bad because you, you know, like you, you went said, it. you went through it. And that's like, people ask me about confidence a lot. Like, how do you become more confident? It's exactly what you guys just said. Mm -hmm. It's by sticking with hard commitments that you make with yourself mm -hmm. and getting to the other side and realizing I could do this. Mm -hmm. yeah. I didn't die. I didn't die. I didn't die. I, I experienced thing. I discomfort. Yeah. yeah. I didn't die. I sat in it. It sucked. It hurt. It was mm -hmm. painful, but I got to the other side and now I know that I can trust myself mm -hmm. yeah. to take action, even when it's scary or when it's painful that I will get to the other side. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the only way that you can trust yourself and build that trust 
is by doing mm -hmm. and getting hurt mm -hmm. and being in discomfort. That's why I take ice baths every week just to practice being uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. I do mm -hmm. stuff to make myself uncomfortable all the time so that I can always you prove to myself that. Yeah. that I am strong enough to do anything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that when that that I'm ready for battle, I love that analogy. Mm -hmm. What yeah. was that again? That quote, I'm equipped. I'm I'm unprepared, but I'm equipped. Mm. Mm. I feel very unprepared. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I mean, and I, I, I was talking to my mom about it or somebody asked me like, how do you feel? And I was like, I feel very unprepared mm. because I don't know. That's right. What, yeah. I've never faced that season in my right. life because it's new and that's okay. I'm not scared because I'm equipped. Right. I'm not afraid of it because yeah. I'm equipped, but I'm not fully prepared because I don't, I don't know. And that's okay. Yeah. That's, that's okay. okay. I don't have to, I don't have to know. Yeah. It's not for me to know. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's just for me to go through. Yeah. You the only thing saying? that's certain is that nothing's certain. Yeah. Right. That's it's what like, like, life is so unfair. I'm like, it's fair because it's unfair to everyone. <laughs> so it's, yeah. it's very yes. fair. Yes. It's unfair to everybody. And so it looks fair. differently for everyone. And yeah. that's okay. That's why you have to, I, I like what you say. Like, I do stuff to make myself uncomfortable because it places you in a position to always kill your ego. Mm -hmm. And when you take yourself out of a lot of things and taking like, like I was talking about the other day, I was like, I'm no longer going to be offended by other people's experience. That ain't got nothing to do with me. Mm -hmm. Like, why am I offended by mm -hmm. something that you're doing or your life? That mm -hmm. doesn't make any sense. But I think that that's good to like, it also puts you in a practice to kill your ego. Yes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and then when you focus, like for me, when I focus on what I want in my life and the purpose I feel like God has for me, then my focus is on that. And it doesn't matter how uncomfortable I am because that's my purpose. So mm -hmm. I take my ego out of it and I'm driven by what I feel like God has placed me here to do. Yeah. So it doesn't yeah. matter how uncomfortable I am. Yeah. What are you sitting here to do? Yeah. yeah. That's focus right. Focus on that. Right. That's right. And so right. practicing, I love that practicing things that make you uncomfortable do killing cats. Uh, the Bible talks about crucifying your flesh. Mm -hmm. You saying, mm -hmm. I'm saying like when you do that and mm -hmm. you make a practice about it, you take the ego out of it. And yeah. my mom, my mom told me a quote that somebody told her, he, uh, she was asking him about pride and ego. And he said, you can't kill a dead man. Mm. Mm. If I crucify my flesh daily, I remove my ego. I take out my pride. Nothing you say can offend me. That's right. Yeah. I'm not yeah. offended by nothing yeah. that you say. You can't hurt me. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. This is a, I, I'm, I'm a spirit led for first, first person. Right. You can't, not by yeah. Flesh. Like yeah. I'm not, you can't make me mad. You can't yeah. hurt me. And one of the yeah. biggest reasons people don't take action on what they want or their purpose or what they know that they're supposed to do is because they're so scared of what other people are going to yeah, think, think of about them. or say about mm -hmm. it or mm -hmm. say about them. But here's the thing. The fa fastest way to kill the ego is to remember that it's not about you. It's not about yeah. you. It's about the other person attached to it. It's yeah. about the impact that you're making. So, mm -hmm. so we, I, I just try to think about every day and like H O P E help one person every day. If I can just think about it, because, you know, we all, we all have an ego. Mm -hmm. It exists in all of us. Mm -hmm. We all get into that mode of thinking about for at least for a few minutes, mm -hmm. what's someone going to think if I say that? Yep. What's someone going to think of like the way mm -hmm. I look or the way I sound yep. or the way I whatever? We're humans and that's natural and normal. Yep. But the faster that you can flip it and get out of that ego and realize, oh, that's my ego. Think about how I'm impacting other people. Mm -hmm. I'm going to think about the people I'm talking to, the yeah. relationships I'm making, how I can help one person yep. every day. It takes yeah. me out of it. It's not yep. about me. Yeah. Yep. And that makes everything, it makes the action taking so much easier. easier. Yeah. It, and that's like, that's why yeah. some people can take action and some people are frozen. Yeah. Mm. All right, you guys, before we continue with this episode, we got to pay some bills. This episode is brought to you by Clinique and their brand new product, the Clinique Even Better Clinical Dark Spot Interrupter. So you guys, if you have dark spots, it can often feel like a vicious cycle. As soon as one fades, another one pops up. Break the cycle with Clinique Even Better Clinical Dark Spot Interrupter. This powerful serum works on melanin-rich to fair skin and helps visibly correct dark spots, such as acne marks, while protecting from future discoloration. Okay, you guys, I've used a ton of products, and what I love most about this is that it's oil-free, alcohol-free, sulfate-free, paraben-free, and fragrance free and i love it because it's a powerful brightening serum from melanin rich to fair skin to visibly improve uneven skin tone and interrupt the look of future dark spots get your even better clinical dark spot interrupter today available at clinique.com again that's clinique.com get your product today now back to the episode 
Mm -hmm. And you think about it, though, think about the people that we love the most that were not idolized. No one should idolize anybody, but the people that were like so inspired by the most, those are people who Chris Brown. Yeah. Chris Brown, (laughs) Michael Jackson. They didn't care what people thought about them. Yeah. Whitney didn't care what people thought about. She got on that stage with a wet lip and didn't care. (laughs) She, you know what I'm saying? I don't care what people think about Prince didn't care what people thought about him. You know what I'm saying? The people that we Some love them. <laughs> she had a wet. She had a wet lip. With a wet wig and sweat. Sweat. <laughs> she said, <laughs> never mind. I'm not even going to go into that. Ricky, but, Bobby. But yeah, <laughs> Jesus. Or maybe they did care. Because we don't know what was going <laughs> on in their mind. She cared about it. <laughs> maybe she did Ray. care. Betty she, really trying to be prophetic. <laughs> Whitney did not care with her wet lip. <laughs> what? <laughs> Don't do the greatest. <laughs> That's ridiculous. First she didn't care. She asked for a towel numerous times. She did it. She, she was, was on that stage and she didn't care. Whitney's lip was wet every stage. And I didn't care because and none it of was, us cared because she could sing. <laughs> She's she the greatest. Delivered. She Please, delivered. If she wasn't sweating, we weren't happy. <laughs> well, if you're, you can't listen. If, she went, if that lip wasn't wet, let me tell you, there was no goosebumps. So let me tell you what. She needed that wet lip, and we appreciate that. And she didn't care. That's what I'm saying. No one cared. She didn't care. You just be yourself and be great. And that's why they have the impact, a global impact that they have. You know what I'm saying? Because they didn't care what people thought about them. That's important. Kanye West, another example. True. Doesn't care what people think. That man has a global impact that we won't even know he's the extent of that until way after he's gone. Yeah. So he, you know what I'm saying? Just not caring what people think. Yeah. One of my important. favorite things about Kanye is I watched that documentary on HBO. Amazing. Yeah. Oh, when Netflix? he yes, yeah, or it was sorry, it wasn't yeah, HBO. Netflix, it was on yeah. Netflix. When he walked into all of those offices and just rap. and just started Ooh. rapping, and they were they were literally like Kanye, I Kanye, told you I'm four sick of times. this. Like he didn't care. He didn't He's care. like, oh I'm here. God. No, listen to this. Listen to this. Crazy. Listen to this. He didn't. He didn't care. So dope. He didn't care how he didn't he didn't care to embarrass himself no. either. And that's another thing. He didn't have any pride. Yeah. When it came to his purpose. That's right. Yeah. I'm sure he dealt with pride. We all deal with pride. Yeah. But when it came to his purpose, he's like, I I don't care. Yeah. I don't care if I look crazy. Yep. I, don't I don't care, care if nobody agrees agree. with me. I was just about to say that. I don't yep. care if you disagree with me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I mm-hmm. and I that's another thing that I feel like with this platform too is a is a thing that we're always gonna have to, you know be mindful about Mm -hmm. because there are certain things that I feel like God will call you to do. That is so contrary to the trending. And you just, or you have to, and you just have to do it because he called you to do it. He didn't call everybody to do it. That's right. You know, that's important. And there's only one of you. And if somebody else can do it, then why would he need you to do it? Why would I use you? If I, if I told everybody to do it, what do I need you to do it for? Mm -hmm. I told Mm -hmm. you to do it. And sometimes you got to be so mindful and, and, and committed to that, yeah. that it doesn't matter how embarrassed I am. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Nobody agrees with me. It doesn't matter. Yeah. I know within me, I know yep. that I'm supposed to do this, to do this. no matter what. That's, yep. right. that's that thing. Yep. And that's a hard, and in this climate, I feel like that's very hard. Especially yes. in this generation, in this very world, hard. in this man, being, all that being canceled shit. You say one thing. We've already been, we've. We're, really? We're not, oh, I yeah. mean, yeah. We're three months in. There's already been controversial topics and stuff. and Still, to this still day. Still, comments me too, and, yeah. you know, it's like, Lord. Yeah. But we feel like we're walking in our purpose. Yeah. And we're not always right. We're not saying that. But, you know, the door is always open for dialogue. Mm-hmm. You know? You're having the conversation. Yeah. You're having the conversation that some people are scared to have. Yeah. You know, yeah. and that's how you're going to create impact. Yeah. Not by just, like, playing it safe all the time. Yeah. And saying what everybody wants mm-hmm. you to say. And yeah. being, like, the perfect version of what you're supposed to mm-hmm. be out there. Yeah. Like, that's not the type of person. Like you said, like, Whitney Houston, Kanye West, Michael Jackson. What do they all have in common? Well, that they're, like, the greatest performers of all Mm -hmm. time that will leave a legacy forever and ever and ever, Mm -hmm. but also that they were not scared to Mm -hmm. say how they feel and be themselves and, you know, and do the thing, even if like walk in their truth. Yeah. No one likes it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, walk into the office and just be like, I don't care if you're not going to listen to me. I'm going to rap right now. Yeah, That's crazy. I'm going to rap. Yeah. I don't care. Megan has always been like a huge Kanye fan. And after I told her, after I watched it, I was like, I get what you've been saying. I I get it. it. Yeah. I get it. I have a question for you, then, Jen, and I know we're getting ready to wrap up soon. Yeah. Um, what? So be, you've been manifesting for a really long time, and I feel like, you know, 
the way you articulate yourself, you're like, wow, she's perfect. I mean, you live this beautiful life of manifestation. You've been able to get all the things you want. But tell me a, what you, what the work currently is. Like, what's something that you're challenged with? Like, because we all have to, once I feel like I'm developed in one area, then the God shifts me and I'm like, damn, I feel like I gotta, I'm got. i learning all over again. Oh, man. Or there's yes. a new challenge. Or So tell me what is something that you feel like you're, um, not struggling with, but yeah. like, you know, what's a challenge for you mm -hmm. right now? Even yeah. while you have all of these tools to manifest. Yeah, I've got all these tools, but I forget the tools all the time. Mm -hmm. That's why I just, we're showing B, I just got a new, I, my very first tattoo oh, on nice. my wrist. It says time. Um, Cause I need this reminder that time never stops. Mm -hmm. I forget, I get in my head, I get in my ego. I'm, I'm human. Mm -hmm. I'm not perfect by the way at all. My journey's not been perfect, yeah. but I'm so grateful for all the imperfect messy parts mm -hmm. and the part, the parts and times that were the darkest yeah. that we haven't even touched on yeah. because they've helped me to be resilient today and be like, mm -hmm. I'm armed. I know, mm -hmm. like I can be uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. I can fall on my face and I can get back up. Mm -hmm. But right now to answer your question, what I'm working for is I'm not even close <laughs> to being where I want to be. Mm -hmm. Not even cool. Not even, I'm like just scratching the surface. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. this is like, I just like, mm, yeah, not even there. Yeah. But um, you know, now I'm, I told you one of my biggest goals is to be the, the greatest motivational mm -hmm. speaker of all time. And right now I'm speaking on all these stages and it's all men mm -hmm. and that's, it's all guys. And that's great for me because I stand out and I've got a great, you know, okay, I'm like the only woman that's doing this mm -hmm. right now, but I feel a really big responsibility now. And it's very, it's like Sorry. to be, um, kind of the first mm -hmm. in this space to really break through and be the woman that's the motivational speaker on stage with all the guys. And part of me like loves that so mm -hmm. much. Um, but part of me is like, okay, I got a, I got a job to do here and I've got a lot of responsibility here. And I'm, I know that I need like my 10,000 hours of practice also. Mm. So here's the thing about, I used to be on Broadway and performed on stage. You get to do 10 shows a week. You get to try every single night and you get to, you're a comedian, you get to feel the beats. You get to feel when the audience laughs. You get to yeah. feel, you know, each time you do it, it gets better. And that's mm -hmm. what I loved about doing a show every day. Now, when I go speak on stage, I speak once for 30 minutes and then I got to wait two weeks before I do it again. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, but I just felt bad. I want to do it again now. Mm -hmm. And I don't get to do it again. Mm -hmm. So I've got to really like put in the work ask a lot of people for help, put myself out there, mm -hmm. say, I want to be on that stage. I want to be on the stage. Even if it's all guys, even if it's scary, it's a lot of discomfort mm -hmm. that I know is coming for me. Yeah. And I've got my book that I'm writing that's coming out in October. Yeah. That's scary. Mm -hmm. Got to ask a lot of people for help it's to help me promote book? it. My first book. Yay. My <laughs> first book. So they, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm definitely not there. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of discomfort that's it now mm -hmm. and in my future of of kind of paving the way mm -hmm. to get there and, and i'm excited about it because yeah. i know that's just gonna arm me more yeah for yeah. when i do get there because yeah. it's never gonna end it's never it never yeah. ends what's up you guys really quick before we move on with the show y'all already know for the kfs family we got promo codes after promo codes after promo codes and look what's on my lips be some on beauty baby right now i got on time will tell liner with baby boy and a little bit of detox mix it in be simone beauty gloss mwah, all on the lips use the promo code kfs20 okay for our kfs family it's kfs20 20 percent off a be simone beauty and get your lips to look like this mwah, kfs20 all caps back to the show and when I get there, I'm going to want to get somewhere yep. else, mm -hmm. yep. right? Be because goal. we've got yep. a growth mindset. Yep. So it's never like, oh, I'm here. Yay. Now I'm just going to chill. Yeah. Yep. No, I'm never arriving. Yep. Yeah. So, never arrived. Yeah. yeah. Never arrived. Never. That's a good. Well, before we wrap up, I do, we do two things. We'll get to that real quick, but I do want to, you have time, like maybe a couple yeah. more minutes. Yeah. I do want to discuss, um, because Megan is super advocate for mental health. We talk about that a lot on mm. our platform, all, you know, mindset <clears throat> and just what we've been through. Yeah. She's been very open with her mental health issues and process. Yeah. And you talked about, um, uh, your, your depression and you went yeah. through a whole phase of like your eating disorder yeah. and we don't have to go too deep into that, but just anybody that is listening, yeah. how to get out of that dark space and kind of what we talked about with time. I want you to reiterate that we mm. talked about it off camera, but just yeah. your, your process through that. 
Well, I can never sit here and tell anybody how to get out of a depression or eating disorder because I'm just not equipped to do that because I'm not a mental health yeah. expert. Yep. But yep. I did experience a lot of depression in my life and a severe eating disorder or a severely bulimic. Mm. And um, mm. my now my healing journey was much different than I'm sure anybody else's healing journey would be because everybody's journey is different. Yeah. Um, but one thing that helps me now, because I feel like we're always – we were always needing to use different tools to be able to get through things. And now I I can get through things in a healthy way. Um, And my favorite concept ever is why I tattooed this on my wrist. I didn't go get a tattoo because I wanted a tattoo. I got this tattoo because I wanted this word on my body to remind Mm -hmm. me every single day Mm -hmm. that time never stops. Mm -hmm. It doesn't freeze. So discomfort Mm. is always temporary, no matter what. If you're uncomfortable in an uncomfortable moment, it eventually will pass, eventually. And the more that you can sit in it and embrace the discomfort and feel the discomfort and maybe not have to numb out with whatever you're using to numb out and Mm -hmm. be in that, the more equipped you are to do it again later, right? And so it doesn't, it's it's only temporary. And then the same thing for the good moments. Right. So the right. good moments are also only temporary. Mm. So, so you, you have really to live need in those too. Be present. Yep. Yep. Experience them so fully. Receive them. And we forget to do that too. Mm-hmm. Because every time we fully receive an amazing moment and like milk in it and bask in it, number one, that ups our frequency. So we attract more like mm-hmm. stuff to us yeah. there. And then number two, we're able to remember that we're capable of feeling that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So when you're in the really dark time, And we will be there. Mm -hmm. We will. Because that's life. Okay? Life throws red lights at us. It just does. Um, Matthew McConaughey says this in his book. I love his book because it says that um, you're going to get red lights no matter what. That's a guarantee. But when you're getting the green ones, like, go. Go. (laughs) Embrace them. Don't don't make your own red lights. That's just dumb because yeah. they're going to come anyway. Yeah. And the more you can really milk the green ones and, and the good times, the more equipped you're going to be. Mm-hmm. And, and same with when you get the red ones, mm-hmm. the more you can sit in it yeah. mm-hmm. and experience the discomfort and know that it will end. Mm-hmm. You're always going to end up in your bed. Yep. Right. Right. Yeah. When I work out, you know, you're working out yeah. now. So I do this really cool thing. This might, this is like a tool that everybody can use. <laughs> um, and this has helped me a lot. Okay. And, and I do it when I exercise. You could do it any time, though. So when we exercise, we feel a lot of uncomfortableness. Mm-hmm. feel a lot of discomfort. It sucks. You're in it. You're like, I really don't want to do this. I really don't want to do this. This hurts. But that's how you make the magic. That's how yeah. you get better. It's how you get stronger. It's how you get fit. So after my workout, every time, no matter what, non-negotiable, I lay down on the mat and I look up at the sky and I say, God, I'm back on the mat again. The time didn't stop. Mm. It was uncomfortable, but here I am. Mm -hmm. And I have that. It's over. And if every time you do that, you always have that reminder that it's going to end. Yep. So when it's uncomfortable, I'm going to be on the mat in like 15 minutes. Right. Just do it. Just do it. Right. Just do it. Just do it. Because the more you prolong it, the more you're prolonging your healing or your relief. Shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like just get it over get with. It over just get with. it over start. with. Start. Start. That's what my my uh, I used to have a trainer back in Ohio, Brandon, and his wife Olivia, and he used to tell me like he would put, you know, I would have to do back squats or something like that, and I would be like, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I'm like, I'm like, I'm not ready. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. And he would always say, um, Go before you're ready. Mm. So Chris. Just got start before you're ready (laughs) on his arm, and I got time on my head. Yeah, that's so crazy. Yeah, he would always say, "Go before you're ready. Just go, just Just do it. it. You're never gonna be ready. Never. You're never ready. You're never really prepared. Like I said before, you're never really prepared. Just go. You got you. But you've done it before. You you can can just do. Just go. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You're never really ready. You just gotta go for it. You gotta do it to become ready. Yeah. Like you guys weren't ready to do this podcast. We talked about this. Like you didn't have it all mapped out. You just started. And the more that you did it, the more ready you got. The more you figured things out. As we go. Yeah. Yeah. It's important. Oh, yeah. I love this conversation. <laughs> I could talk to you guys all day. Well, I know. You got to go. go. I know. You got to come back. You have to come back. And um, we always do the two little no for sure. Okay. So what do you know for sure? K-N-O-W. What do you know for sure after this conversation? And what are you saying no to for sure? Mm, so okay. the two. All right. So, I mean, this is really part of just the conversation. I know for sure that discomfort is temporary, but growth is permanent. Mm -hmm. Mm. Um, And that's like what I live by. 
And then, what am I saying? No, for sure, too. Mm-hmm. Um, like N-O, for sure. Yeah, no, for sure, to <laughs> um, inaction. Good. Inaction. I think that that wraps up our whole yeah. conversation, yeah. right? That's really, yeah. like, I think. Take we, action. You know what I love is that we kind of thought the conversation, the theme was going to be something different, and then it kind of turned into something else. It's, like, just, and then it, it's full circle where mm-hmm. it's, like, this or something better. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. It, uh, I don't know if we had all these questions. I still had a few I didn't even ask her, but I was like, well, just let it be organic. We just literally talk, and, you know, it, it um, trickles down, it snowballs into the next conversation well when you're talking to good people like it's just this is i love that you guys are doing this thank you it's like an it's like a people get to listen in on maybe conversations that they wish they could have with their friends yeah Yeah. and maybe this will initiate it does conversations i was telling her that i was like we were just like the private conversations that we're having people need to hear this because it'd be it touches us when we're mm-hmm. talking we're like we need to share this with the world mm-hmm. like i'm so glad this, you're doing you know mm-hmm. so my, it's gonna help oh, th- it's gonna help thousands of people yeah, yeah. you know what i'm saying yeah. and whatever you know yeah. is meant to be said on we always we don't really plan plan every little piece of the conversation yeah. um because i do believe that whatever god needs to get to whoever is out there it will happen good and i believe that yeah, we all touched good. on something that is going to touch somebody else yeah. i agree and this is really powerful. Yeah. Um, you want to do your know for sure? Uh, what do I know for sure? I know for sure what I said earlier. I'm walking into a season in my life where I am very unprepared, but I feel very equipped. Um, and I'm saying no to, mm, what am I saying no to? I am saying no to being offended by other people's experience. I, that is like huge for me right now. Mm-hmm. It's like, I, Least, yeah, literally. <laughs> Do you <laughs> like Boom. honestly? That might like, be my it first just, test. <laughs> like least, like I, I cannot. Least. Like I, that has nothing to do with me. And it, yeah. and why am I so prideful that I think that your actions are specifically about me? Yeah. <laughs> like you know what I mean? Like who am I? Yeah, no, I'm not doing that. That's good. Wait, um, no, for sure. I know for sure. Manifestation works. I've done it. I've experienced it and like I said it's just faith with adding the work you guys Mm -hmm. so just have the faith have the belief and start um I'll go back to the secret just in case nobody knows the secret the law of attraction is on Netflix you can watch it and it's super super dope um no for sure no for sure no for sure I'm saying no to not being committed to my regiment Mm. like I am really about to like I haven't made a vision board in a while Mm. I haven't really like gone into the depths of my manifestation my affirmations I've been doing that lately but like making it like I brush my teeth every day Mm -hmm. (laughs) I get ready every day I put on clothes every day I have to do my regimen yeah every day like Mm -hmm. I have to commit to doing that so you know just getting in the I'm saying no to not committing to that okay like my affirmations my morning like I feel so good when I do that Mm -hmm. you know setting the intention for the day so yeah great that's my no Good. Thank you. Thank you so much Thank for coming, you. Jen. So much. You were so this great. So you guys good. follow her. Tell them your social media. Yeah. And Instagram stuff. at Jen underscore Gottlieb. Just go there and you'll find all the things Everything. from there. All Everything the stems Thank from that. Thank you. Another episode of the No For Sure podcast. I'm hey Lisa guys. Malone. Megan Ashley. Megan Ashley. And we're out of here. Bye. Bye. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to the Know For Sure podcast. Make sure you keep the conversation going and use our hashtag KnowForSurePod. Yes, we want to see you guys share the hashtag KnowForSurePod on all social media platforms. We want to keep the conversation going. Keep it going. Go to the website KnowForSurePod.com and follow us on all social media platforms, Instagram and Twitter, KnowForSurePod.